Now, when it comes to industrial optimization, OPF has many advantages. You can use it to optimize the fuel mix so that you can improve power generation efficiency, balance that mix along with the system security, minimize the real power losses, and of course, find the best uh, fuel cost in terms of power generation. You can also control grid exchange power by balancing the grid and uh, improving the voltage stability by also adjusting the reactive power and by adjusting the reactive power we are also maximizing our security. We can uh, also utilize OPF just like with microgrid systems for optimal asset utilization where we are minimizing the excessive uh, mechanical controls that may be used to optimize the system and then we can also use OPF for capacity derating so if there is temporary maintenance in the system or there are other factors that are causing a particular asset to be derated, then you can essentially set up OPF to uh, set up various constraints and then optimize the flow within the network such that you are minimizing the losses and improving the system security. Here we have an, a quick example of an industrial system where we are essentially uh, looking at uh, two generators in the network along with uh, the industrial loads and one utility connection. So when we switch over to our load flow analysis and run our simulation, we can see that there is a certain amount of power being uh, generated by uh, generator one, uh, about uh, three megawatts that's being imported from the grid, and about uh, eight megawatts from generator two. So 11, eight, and three approximately. And uh, the amount of losses from this particular network uh, can be observed inside the summary report that we can go to the last page and we can see that the apparent losses are about uh, 140 kilowatt and almost one uh, megawatt in the system. However, we'll focus a little bit more on the fuel uh, optimization and see how OPF uh, balances our three uh, different uh, sources. So we can essentially uh, set up uh, the fuel cost within each uh, source. The fuel cost is set up within the, the generator, for example, and it can be uh, heat rate versus output or cost versus output. The uh, fuel type can be established based on a piecewise, which is pointwise equation or V curve based. And you can also define the fuel cost profiles, which ETAP allows you to define about 10 of them. This lets you uh, manage not just uh, one fuel price, but multiple fuel prices, especially if your generator is capable of running on more than one fuel type. Uh, and you can decide what the fuel type mix should be by entering in the blended cost or the individual cost of the fuel. The cost curve gives us the cost in dollars per hour versus the megawatt output. And you can also see the incremental cost. The numbers are purely there for representation. They, they do not represent a, a real system or a real generator. But of course, these would be substituted with the fuel cost from your generation system. You can also define the operating limits, which may be beyond uh, the values that are based on the nameplate of the machine. So if your generator is 13.28 megawatt, you can define an operating range that is slightly tighter including certain prohibited operating ranges. So let's take a look at the utility price, which is the energy price from the grid. And this is defined also based on a piecewise model. And you can also define the minimum and maximum dispatch for the grid that you want to constrain or limit the utility power. Uh, the model parameter also gives us a piecewise value of the cost per megawatt, what is the cost per megawatt hour. So you can see the price and the incremental price in dollars per megawatt hour as well. So the first scenario that I've already created in the interest of time is when we want to minimize uh, the cost on the system uh, such that the generator one is actually the cheapest source while generator two is actually not the cheapest source. So here we can see OPF rebalancing such that we are using generator two purely for its reactive power and not the real power output. 
the grid power goes from 3 megawatt to 8.6 and generator 1 takes up maximum load and reaches its uh, rated limit of 13.281 megawatt. So this is a case where we are setting up the program such that generator 1 is the cheapest source of energy and you can see how OPF uh, rebalances or redistributes this within the, the network. Now when we switch over such that generator 2 now happens to be the cheapest source you can see generator 1 megawatt going to 0 and generator 2 picking up almost 10 megawatt while the grid actually picks up 11.2 and this is a case where there's a blend between the energy price on the grid and the generator power so they're not dispatched uh, the same as generator 1 and finally when we have our generator which is uh, expensive both generators are expensive so in both cases the real power essentially goes to zero megawatt and we are using them again purely for the reactive power and maximum power or almost 22 megawatts is now actually coming from the grid so this could be a case where we have switched the fuel on the generator and the cheapest source uh, based on the energy price and the loading of the system happens to be the grid now these are all snapshots in time and when we look at the operate side we can see how this dispatch works on a continuous basis. Let's take one more example of an industrial system where we essentially have a power grid. We have a couple of industrial motors in the system. We have uh, two different generators here and uh, a number of other uh, miscellaneous auxiliary loads in the network. Now in this case we'll take a look at uh, what happens when we are trying to use OPF to just improve our voltage only. And here we can see that uh, in certain parts of the system with, with the magenta color you can already see that there are certain buses that are uh, under voltage in the, in the network and we want to have a bit more of a flatter uh, voltage profile in the electrical circuit. Now we can quickly see what's going on by turning our color contouring on and we can see the, the orange and the red patches are essentially telling us where we have lower voltages in the system. The green area, everything is perfectly fine. That means it's close to nominal values. And if you see any of the blue colors or bluish colors, uh, those are areas where we can see this slightly over voltage, but not by much. Now, in this case, this is our base case that we are running, which is through low flow. And I've already set up OPF to flatten the voltage profile. So we can see what happens when OPF runs. So those uh, the orange red areas have essentially been eliminated and replaced with slightly bluer uh, areas, which means we are slightly over the nominal values. And we can zoom in and see uh, how much over. We are at about 102% uh, or so of the uh, uh, nominal values. And this is basically OPF trying to use the various controls that we have in our system to get to these uh, healthier uh, voltage levels. You can of course see the controls and constraints and the optimal settings through the uh, output report. And here we can see within the crystal report what the generator A, C and utility power levels are supposed to be and in terms of the optimal settings.